Hey guys, Sean here from VisibleDark.ca. Welcome to another video. And uh, I'm very, very excited uh, to have a, uh, an image uh, submitted by a subscriber um, that uh, found some of my videos uh, helpful in his processing workflow. Uh, this image is of M81, M82 by Rhett, and um, he's done a fantastic job with it. It looks, uh, it looks amazing, um, very nicely done, nice illumination across the field. Uh, it looks like uh, his uh, flats and darks worked uh, really well, and um, the noise is uh, being controlled quite nicely as well. So uh, very impressive, uh, good detail in the uh, galaxies and uh, the color balance has been uh, nicely done. Uh, great job, Rhett. Um, you really uh, did a fantastic one with this image and I appreciate you letting me uh, share it with the other uh, viewers. Um, any tips I might have um, that uh, I could offer? Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's a great image to begin with, so hard to improve on. One thing that I might do, and this is pure uh, taste, uh, artist prerogative, as I always say, um, I might actually uh, tweak the histogram transformation slightly, bring up the uh, the, the brightness of the image. Um, so if we did that, what it would look like is um, just tweaking it a little bit to make it uh, just a, a little bit brighter, not, uh, not too much, just a little bit. Uh, a little more gray in there in the background um, works uh, nicely I think and it actually helps to bring out some of the fainter details in fact um, if it's probably hard for viewers to see but I can see it and I'm sure Rhett can too um, he's uh, managed to capture some of the uh, IFN that's uh, in there as well scattered throughout this region you can uh, faintly see it starting to uh, emerge in his image so if now if he had uh, if red had uh, doubled this uh, image time um, this data uh, he'd probably see a lot more of it but um, it is evident when you start to stretch the image a little more that uh, the IFN is uh, visible in there he did capture some of it so that's pretty fantastic because that's that's really faint stuff so and that that's hard to capture especially if you're in uh, urban areas or suburban areas um, it's uh, uh, something that's really strictly uh, for dark sites uh, when you're trying to image uh, and M81, M82, and you're trying to capture the IFN. Dark sites is really the only way that you could probably get it uh, and have it uh, pronounced uh, really well. Um, but let's get back to this. So uh, if we increase the, uh, we did a little stretch with the histogram just to uh, brighten it up a bit. Uh, we end up with this, which is still uh, in line with Rhett's uh, version. Um, what else I might do is I think that um, you could probably apply um, a little uh, HDR wavelet transform to M81 and uh, the HDR multi-scale transform tool can do that for you. Uh, values, you can play around with the number of layers. Uh, going down uh, is more aggressive, going up is less aggressive. What I would probably do in this case here is uh, make a mask first of all. So let's uh, do that real quick. We'll make a mask just to isolate M81. Okay, and we'll use the uh, game script, which uh, I did another video on and talks about how to use it and uh, where to get it. So we'll just make a mask around M81 here. This is a gradient mask that we're doing. Okay, there we have it. And now we want to apply that mask to our image. There we go. And we'll just turn off the preview of the mask so that we're not looking at it. Let's do a, uh, a preview window here so that we can apply the HDR multi-scale transform and uh, see what results. Now, if I do six, six is the default. If I do that, we can see what happens in the core of the galaxy. Um, it actually, more details emerge, but I think it's too aggressive. So I'd want to back that off a bit. I don't want it too aggressive uh, that it doesn't uh, look right. And uh, that definitely doesn't look right. So let's take it up to a seven, which is slightly less aggressive. And we'll apply that. And uh, I think, yeah, see, we got, we got a nice balance going on there. So what we've done, if I uh, go back and forth, that's the original. And that's with the HDR multi-scale transform applied. So what you're seeing is a little bit more of the details emerged and uh, a little bit of the, uh, 
the uh, the brightness uh, taken off the uh, the edge there so that you can start to reveal those uh, those details in the uh, galaxy and I think that uh, is deserving of Rhett's image because it's so good um, little little tweaks like this can really go a long way so uh, let's apply that to the image and we'll let Pix and Sight do its thing here for a second. And there it's done. Okay, so then the uh, next thing that I would probably do is um, uh, on M82 itself, I would look at maybe using the local histogram equalization, and this is going to help uh, bring out some of the details in M82 as well. Um, we don't really need, in, in my opinion, we don't really need to apply the HDR multiscale transform to this. It's not uh, going to help us. Um, I think the local histogram equalization will help bring out some of the more dark details, dark dust lanes and, and whatnot. Um, so let's uh, have a quick look at doing that. Um, I'll just make a preview real quick, but we want to make another mask. So I'm going to turn that mask off and I'm going to go back to the game script load that up and I'm going to add a mask and we're going to place it over M82. Just like that. And we click OK. And it'll create the gradient mask for us as we can see there. Now we can apply that to the image. And we'll just check that it is on. Yep, there it is doing its job. So red is protected. And you can see uh, M82 is uh, being left that we can actually uh, do some work on it. So we'll just uh, turn the mask preview off. And we'll switch to the preview 2, which shows the uh, M82 galaxy. And local histogram equalization uh, default tends to be about 64 with a contrast limit of 2 and an amount of 1. You can adjust these parameters and you can see what effect it has on your particular image and uh, what works best. Um, if we use the defaults here, we can get an idea um, how it works if it uh, was useful or not. It actually brought up some details for us. You can see a slight difference there. Um, I'm not convinced that 64 is where we want to be. I would say maybe somewhere in the 74 might be a little better. Let's try that and see what happens. Yeah, there, that looks a little better. So there we've got a little bit of a noticeable difference bringing up some of those details using the local histogram transformation tool. And we want to apply that. So we go back to our image and drag and drop the local histogram equalization onto it. And we'll let PixInsight do its thing. And there, it's done. Okay, so what else could we do to uh, Rhett's image and uh, give it a little bit of a boost. Um, I would say that we could actually push the um, push the uh, color saturation uh, quite a bit more than, uh, than where it's at right now. Um, let's give it a try and just have a look and see uh, what we get. So we'll just do a preview on the image here and let's just bump up the color saturation overall on the image. And see, yeah, that's beautiful. It looks fantastic. It's, it's, you've got, see, Rhett did such a great job controlling the noise and in his processing of the image that um, you can actually push some of these uh, details farther um, when you have really good processing. And Rhett did a great job with that. So it's his uh, processing and his control of the noise in the image has really helped uh, allow me to uh, do some extra things here. Um, so let's apply that level of saturation to the image and let's see what it looks like if we uh, double up on that. And I think we can definitely double up on that. We may not want to do that with the stars, though. You'll notice that the stars are getting very exaggerated uh, with the saturation. So how about we go and make a mask for both of the galaxies, and we'll protect the stars uh, so that their saturation is left where they are, and the saturation uh, 
uh, boost that we want to apply uh, further is uh, strictly isolated to the galaxy. So let's go back to the game script. Uh, game script is a great way to create masks easily in PixInsight. If you haven't checked out my other video about that, do so. Um, it shows you how to use it and uh, where to get the script and how to install it um, in your uh, PixInsight so that you can incorporate it into your workflow. So I'll just uh, add these uh, masks in here like that real quick. Not taking too much time. It's, it's basically bam, bam, bam. There we go. We've got our masks and that's, uh, that's done. And that works great. So it'll make the uh, gradient masks now for me. And we'll just give it a second. There it is there. And we'll apply it to the image. And let's just double check. Yep, galaxies are open for work to be done on them while the rest of the image is red and it's protected. We'll turn off the mask preview. Now let's go back to the saturation and we want to apply this. We're going to, we've left it exactly where we had the first time. So we're going to apply an equal amount again of that to the image. So we'll do that. And there we have it. We've done some color saturation boosting to this and it looks fantastic, looks great. It's a fabulous image, Rhett. Uh, you did a great job. Um, the only other thing that I could think of uh, that might be beneficial is um, drizzle. Um, the data may have uh, a slight bit of undersampling to it. And um, that's quite common when you're using wide field refractors, uh, which Rhett did. Uh, Rhett's image, uh, he was using a Takahashi 106 and um, wide field of views uh, uh, tend to be undersampled. The arc second per pixel ratio is uh, um, such that you get undersampling. And you can see it in the uh, stars. The stars tend to be a little uh, blocky looking. Drizzle can help actually fix that and smooth out the stars, make them look uh, much better. And uh, that can be done when you're at the uh, image uh, registration phase. So uh, that would be under star alignment in PixInsight. And you'd be looking at um, generating drizzle data um, for the images that you're aligning. Um, so it'll uh, align the images and it'll create the gener it'll generate the uh, drizzle data at the same time and that can be used during image integration. Um, when you're stacking the images you add those drizzle files in and it'll fix these uh, blocky stars for you. Um, that might be a good tip, uh, something to consider uh, uh, future images and that for everyone. Um, I do it. I use drizzle a lot actually because in my setup with the Esprit 100 and the Moravia uh, 16200 I do get under sampling as well so it's something that I'm well aware of and and I have to use drizzle uh, in many cases in most cases anyways um, so that's something to think of and uh, again uh, Rhett's image is fantastic as it was there it's all artist prerogative and I'm simply just throwing out some ideas here uh, that might be beneficial um, I think all of these uh, all these images that you guys do and all the time that you put in um, it's uh, deserving of an applause because I know how much work goes into astrophotography. It's one of the most difficult uh, forms of photography out there. Extremely challenging. We're met with so many obstacles, whether it's equipment issues or clouds. Um, I mean, wow, it just never seems to end. We're, we're up against it. It's an uphill battle for sure. So it's uh, really great that uh, we're able to produce these images, uh, groundbreaking images, really. If you consider that it wasn't that long ago, a couple decades ago, this really was the, uh, the realm of professional astronomers. So uh, bravo that we can actually have this in our hands in our backyards now. So just to give you some image details here, uh, Rhett uh, wrote me that... Um, he uh, had uh, LRGB, he had 100 subs each of LRGB. Um, they were 90 seconds long, and uh, he uh, used uh, the PixInsight batch pre-processing script to calibrate. He stacked and did some cosmetic correction and alignment. Um, his equipment is the Takahashi FSQ, FSQ 106 EDX4, a really, really nice telescope. Uh, way to go there, Rhett, uh, along with a QSI 683. And uh, he's got a 10 micron mount. So uh, Red has some really nice equipment there. And uh, he's doing a great job with uh, his astrophotography, I think. And uh, I'm sure that you do as well. Um, 
if there's anyone else uh, that's out there that uh, is interested in uh, sending in your images uh, for review and or um, to get some ideas on tips as to what might make them uh, uh, stand out a little more if uh, that is the case or if you're having difficulty uh, possibly with an image um, and you're not sure uh, uh, what steps could uh, be done to um, correct it or or to get past the point that you're stuck at let me know. I'm always interested in helping and uh, would love to hear back from more of the subscribers and uh, what you guys are doing out there and uh, see some of the images that are being produced. And uh, if uh, any of my videos uh, are helping, that's great too. I really like that. Uh, that's a good feeling. Um, and you can drop me an email at sean at visibledark.ca. That's sean, S-H-A-W-N, at visibledark.ca. If you uh, email me details there and send your uh, images, I can uh, have a look and, and uh, get back to you and we can go from there. So I hope everyone enjoyed this video. It wasn't a tutorial and it wasn't a look at me uh, doing any of the ass photography uh, hobby, but um, I think this was uh, a great uh, video to do and showcase one of the subscriber uh, images. And um, I really uh, have enjoyed uh, doing this particular video. So uh, thanks for watching. Clear skies, everyone, and keep looking up.